Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video I'll be showing you how to make your own top wins or top leader stat leaderboard in your Roblox game. Basically this allows you to get a leader stat, in my case wins, and display the top people in your game on a single board that people can view. In this case I'm the only person so it shows me as two wins. I'll be showing you how to make it in this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Okay, let's start this tutorial in our Roblox Studio world. We're going to start by creating the board in which the data is displayed on. This is going to be the board again that says who's first, second and third, up to how many you want to, and then the username, and then how many wins or cash, etc, etc, they've got. Now you can make this board however you like, however I'm going to make mine as I show in the tutorial. I'd recommend you doing it this way if you're new to Roblox. However, if you want to show you some skill and do it differently, um, you need to have the scrolling frame inside a surface GUI. That's the vitals. You can change it how it works and the actual design of the board. However, you need to have that scrolling frame. In my board, I contrasted the pink with the black that's where I'm going to be displaying the actual data and I'll be moving on to how I'll do that in a second here. Again I'd recommend also grouping all the parts of your board and make something like wins leaderboard and then we can easily access it inside the script. I also enable names for the main part, for the data part, on my board main. In the surface GUI here, you need to rotate the face around so you can see the frame. You see now you can see the frame on the board before you could not see that as it was on a different face of the part. You need to make sure you get that correct. As you can see I've just created the main frame that's going to display over the entire data board and then I'm inserting the scrolling frame here. This is the frame which all the data is displayed on and if you are going to make a different board this is the part which you have to include. You have to include a scrolling frame. Then here I'm also going to put a quick text label. This is basically going to say the title. So it's going to say something like top wins, etc. You can change it depending on what leader stat you're going to be saving. So it might be cash, it might be wins, in my case, it be anything you like. I forgot to mention in the tutorial you need to include a UI grid layout inside the scrolling frame. The cell size doesn't really matter, it's going to be changing that inside the script. However, the field direction needs to be vertical because it's going to feel down the board. So the person with the top is going to be at the top, the person who's got the lowest wins on the board is going to be at the bottom. Next we need to show the data. This is basically going to be 
the frame which says number one is tweakified and he's got so many wins and it's going to be duplicated how many people you have in the board. So the position is going to be one, two, three, four, five, or all the way down. And then in a second here, I'm going to be duplicating it and I'm going to be creating the username. Obviously that's going to be the username of the player. Here's the username bit. Then lastly, we need to be shown the value and that's the number of wins the player has got. You need to make sure all of these are named correctly when you do it in your world because the script relies on this information. Okay, now let's begin the scripting part of the tutorial by inserting a regular script into the server script service. Now before we actually begin scripting, we'll need to drag the temp frame which we made a second ago over to the script. This is because we're going to be duplicating that frame for each data we add to the board. Let's say, Tweakified has five wins, it'll be at the top. Now that will be duplicated again if WizardX has ten wins. And someone and so forth. The more player it gets duplicated again. Okay, let's begin the scripting part of this tutorial by getting it out all the data store data. So basically, whenever you save data on Roblox, which you're only getting after you leave the game, you need to be using a data store. Now what all the data store is a type of data store that basically allows you to store data in an order. So you can imagine the top people of the that are saved be at number one, and it'll be the second, be number two, etc. etc. So it works like a normal data store, however, you can also get it ordered. Now what we're here is we're getting the actual leaderboard which we made a second ago. Let's get the scrolling frame. You know how I remember you know how I said that we're gonna be duplicating that temp frame over to the scrolling frame well we need to be able to get the actual scrolling frame before we duplicate data to it and we're doing that here okay this variable here in game startup players Basically, in Roblox, we're going to be normally we're going to be searching for new players by basically saying, "Oh, when a player joins the game, run this." However, a player might have already joined the game before this script starts running. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we'll be seeing all the players who are already in the game, and then also running that new player function on them. And then we're also going to be doing it with players who are joining the game while the script is running. Just basically stop it from erroring. In this function here, the new player function, we are basically adding the leader stats to the player. You might have already done this in your world, if you have, don't worry about it. However, this is, I'm going to be still going to be including it for the players who have not done it. I'll be naming the leader stat I'm going to be using here wins. However, again, you can name it to whatever you like. It could be cash, it could be rebirths but in this case I'm using wins. What I'm doing here with the wins data is I'm basically getting all of the data that belongs to the player that has been saved. And then what we're doing here is we're going to be changing the wins leader stat to be that data.
be getting all the data that belongs to the player, and then we're changing the wind leader stat to be that data. And then as before, we created a new player function, and here we're going to make a function that says when a player is leaving the game, then run this. And we're going to be changing that in-game startup player's variable to be nil. It's basically because we do not want the game still thinking that they were a startup player, even if they have left the game. In the player's leaving function, also what we're doing here is we're getting the, the leader stat, data of the player. So let's say they have five wins saved on the leaderboard. We're going to get that, and then we're going to change the ordered data store data on them to be that data. The next time they join, then it will remain like that in the leaderboard. Now what I'm doing also here is I'm making sure that it only saves if their data is more or equal to one. That's basically because we do not want them on the leaderboard if they've got zero wins or zero cash. Okay, if you don't want that, you can just delete that line of code, however I'd recommend it. In this function here, the update can be leaderboard, it will go yellow for you. That's basically because we haven't made it yet, however we will make it in a later part of the video, do not worry about it. Just keep on watching and it will all make sense. In this player added function, we're basically going to get see if they are a in-game startup player or not. And if they're not an in-game startup player, then we'll be running the new player function. This is basically because we do not want it running. We do not want we do not want the new player function running if they are an in-game startup player and if they've already been run. Now here we're getting all the players who are in the game when this script is turned on and running and then we'll be going to be running that new player function then. Now here we're also linking up the player leaving function when a player leaves the game. And then here, we're basically linking up the update leaderboard function to make it so that it updates the leaderboard when the script starts. Okay, let's start here by creating the update GUI leaderboard function that I talked to you guys about. Basically, this updates the top wins or top cash leaderboard in your game. We're going to start off by here by getting all the data. Basically, this is the ordered version of the wins data. We're doing this by getting the get sorted async, which is basically again the sorted version of the regular data. Now here I'm guessing only the top 10 players, how they can do this as many times or you can do this as high as you like, up to a hundred, that's the Roblox maximum. What we're doing here is we're basically getting all of the children of the scrolling frame and we're seeing if they're a regular frame. That's basically because we want to remove all of them temp data frames that we've got currently in the board. Let's say if someone leaves and wants to update the board, we don't want more data to be added before we remove the old stuff. Because you get two like two data sets on the same board. You get Twiggified as the winner and Twiggified as the winner again. We don't want that, we only want to display it once. So we're removing all the previous data there. So in this next part of here, what we're doing is we're getting all the data that we've got and then we're finding the username of the player that's stored. Basically, the player that's stored is stored by a user ID. That's the number that the player is linked to. So mine Twiggified is like 157,000 or something. It's not a very nice name, so we're going to make that into a username there. And then here again, we're cloning that temp data that I told you about, that temp frame. 
We're changing its parent to the scrolling frame, as I've said. So here, what we're basically going to do is we're going to be changing the text labels of the data to be the correct data. So the position here, which is going to be the first, second, and the third, we're going to change it to I, which is basically which data set we're on in sequence. And this bit here, we're going to be changing the username text label to be the username, which we just got. And then lastly here, we're going to be changing the value text label to be the value of, that's basically how many wins or how many rebirths or how much cash they've got is your choice. So what we're doing here is we're changing the scrolling frame size. So you know how you can scroll down basically forever or you can change how far they can scroll down. We're changing that scroll frame size to the perfect size to what it needs to be to hold all the data currently on the leaderboard. Let's say if you've got 100 people on there, so all the way from the best player in the game to the 100th player, down, it will change the scrolling frame size to be the perfect size. That's what this code is doing here for you. This involves changing the scroll size to sorry, the UI grid layout cell size to the perfect size in offset studs it needs to be. And we're getting that offset using the absolute size of the scrolling frame. The actual details aren't that important. Basically, it changes the size of the scrolling frame to the perfect size it needs to be. This feature is called auto scrolling we're probably going to be including it into our next video if you want to know about it in greater detail. Okay, we now are done with that part of the video, but make sure you make, make sure you include that E in update GUI leaderboard there. I forgot to include it. Make sure you include it or it will not work. We're now done with the scripting part. Let's go and test. Okay, let's edit our scripts, press the play button. And then as you can see, as I've already played this game before, I've changed my wins. It's already showing I've got five wins, however it will be zero for you. However, if we go into my player and change the leader stats to be something like 10, I've changed my wins to 10. If I leave the game to update the leaderboards, reload the game which is the data saves as it does you see I've got 10 back in the leaderboard and then the top wins board shows me as 10 wins perfect works you have now got a top wind leader stat all the data store leaderboards inside your game congratulations if this video helped make sure to like and subscribe I'll see you in the next video but before you leave if you can't be bothered to code this all by yourself, the actual source code for this project is in the Discord server of Neon Blocks. It's all in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Peace.